Hey guys, today we're going to be fitting cruise control to my 80 series. So my 80 series is a Sahara and it came with factory cruise control. However, when I put the FTE in, it's a drive-by wire pedal and uh, the cruise control doesn't just fit on. So we're going to have to find a way to graft this cruise control motor to the FTE pedal. So this is the cruise control motor here. So it's just an actuator. Now this one here is where the old throttle pedal used to come in. And you can see the cable used to go like this to there. It was a nice little short pedal, uh, short cable. Just this one here. And this one is spring loaded. So this one used to obviously push the pedal, used to pull the injector pump cable. And the injector pump was on a return spring, so this one would return. And then when you lock it at a speed, it locks this arm. And this one has... Uh, free play so you can you can accelerate and then say you lock it at 100 you can take your foot off the pedal and the pedal will return back to zero it doesn't uh, lock the pedal as per se so because this one doesn't lock the pedal and this one does um, in order to get this to work we need to actually use the injection pump side which is the locking side which is actually the actuator side so you can see the little actuator assembly here. So this is actually the actuator rod and that pushes on this arm when it locks it and it will lock this at certain speeds. So we're going to have to route that inside the car and then join that to the pedal. Now I'm going to join it where the idle up usually goes. So usually on cruisers you have an idle up cable which is this one here and it goes to like a little turny dial on the dash and you can lock it and idle it up so what I'm going to do is fit it to that so this is the throttle pedal so you can see if I not, when I activate this pedal I'm clamping at the moment so it doesn't move too well but we're just going to go on that little uh, hold there so now I'm just going to do is file this out somewhat I've already started it and just so that this cable end will fit in and then I can lock it off and then this cable is going to be a bit too long so first I'm just going to run into the car through a grommet and I'm just going to hold it and go for a drive set the speed that I want on the cruise control and then take my foot off the pedal and what this should do is should pull it should pull in because it's trying to adjust the speed once I know this works then I'm going to hook it up I'll hook it up to here and I'm going to have to cut the cable down a little bit and then I'm going to go, uh, go to a bicycle shop and get a grub screwed end. So you can get little ends that go on these and just grub screw down. Once I've got that end, then I'm just going to chop this uh, little plastic piece just to cut a slit down it and slip it over that cable. And that'll clip into here. So that'll clip into there, the grub screw end. It's going to be a bit of a, bit of a pain in the ass um, to put on. I'm probably going to have to put it on with the pedal out of the car and then sort of fit the whole assembly in. So it's going to be a bit of a pain, but fingers crossed I can get it working. So that's where I'm at. So just do that, and then obviously the adjustment side of things is going to be a bit difficult, but we do have the adjustment screw here as well. Um, but, yeah, I'll try to get it perfect first time. So after all of that, uh, it turns out that I'm going to have to extend this uh, about 30 mil or so because um, when I'm at... Oh, it'll be hard to do now, but... When I'm at full throttle, um, this arm actually near on touches here. So um, when I have this piece in it, which is say 10 mil long, it actually hinders full pedal travel. Not that I go to full throttle anyway, but um, you can see somewhat that it, it almost touches there. So I'm going to have to extend this out somewhat, which will... Uh, be a little bit better because I'll get a bit more adjustment out of this the further I have it back and plus then I won't have to chop the cable if I mount it really far back so here then I uh, I won't have to adjust the cable but I'm gonna have a lot of I'm not gonna have much room in the car behind the dash to do that so I gotta keep that in mind as well okay the cruise control cable is back in so it's this one here bit of a tight radius here but I'm hoping it'll be okay this goes through the hole in the grommet there and if we go around under the dash here, 
You can see the extra long cable bracket I made to mount cable. I just drilled two holes in there. The oil bracket that I already had laying around, luckily. And then this is the uh, cable here. So it bends around and again a bit of a harsh angle, but hopefully it'll be alright. And then uh just slips in. So now I'm just gonna go for a drive, activate cruise control, and then decrease my speed and this cable should pull in by itself. If it does, I know the cruise control works, then I can hook it up. If not, more fault finding. So, fingers crossed it works. Okay, so I went for a drive and uh, yeah, the cable is not pulling in, so the cruise control is not functioning. So I put it into diagnostic mode and it turns out that the uh, speedo is not working. So, in my wiring diagram that I've got here, you can see that power comes in from the ignition switch through the ECU IG fuse and then goes to the speed sensor and then it comes back from the speed sensor, uh, from the speed sensor... So from this wire here to pin one on the speed sensor and then to ground and then this one comes back and it gives you your actual four pulse signal. So what I'm going to have to do now is check between pin one and pin three and see if I've got voltage there. I've checked it at the fuse and I've definitely got voltage here. Um, but this one also powers the cruise control indicator so if that fuse was blown um, or the power circuit between here and here was no good then it wouldn't get there. So now I'm going to check voltage down here, which will show that this circuit here is all good. If I've got um, voltage there, then I'm going to take the sensor out and turn the sensor over, and I should get a uh, four pulse signal. If I don't, then it's obviously the sensor. If I do, then sometime, something between pin 2 and pin 20, there's a break in the circuit here. So relatively easy. Um, what I can do is I can take the connector off the ECU down there, and run a wire down a pin 2 on the plug and see if there's an open circuit. If there is, then I'm going to have to find the brake or run a new wire. So, fingers crossed it's just the sensor, I guess. It's probably a bit easier. So this little connector here is the uh, speedo connector. So I've checked battery voltage and I'm definitely getting 12 volts there. So now I'm just um, going to check continuity of the cable for the speedo. So I've got my multimeter on continuity. See, I'm getting continuity there. Three ohms, two ohms. So, getting good continuity. So, I'll just show you how I'm achieving that. So, I've got the connector out, and I've just got the uh, multimeter sort of just jammed in the back. So, pin 20 here, which is this lower pin here, is the uh, speed sensor wire. So, I know that I've got continuity between that wire. I've got voltage at the uh, plug as well, got a nice stable 12 volts, so it basically it's got to be the sensor, um, so it's either the cabling from the sensor or the sensor itself, so now the next step is to take the sensor out, and what you can do is you can um, rotate it in a drill, and you can check for um, uh, four continuity spots every rotation, so in the manual they say to put battery voltage between pin 1 and 3, and then rotate it and check between pin 2 and ground, um, and you'll get 12 volts every four rev uh, four times every revolution because it's a four pulse sensor. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to rotate it by hand. I should get four points of continuity. Um, chances are I don't have any, so we'll do that now. So they're under the back here where the speed sensor is. So my 80 series is a cable drive speedo. So this is a cable that goes all the way up to the instrument cluster. And then what it's got for the um, factory cruise control is it's got this little inline electronic converter. So what we need to do now is just undo the speedo cable, pull that out, and then just wind this speedo electric converter out, and we'll check the wiring for it. Because it's, chances are it's uh, probably a bit stuffed just there. So we'll have a look. Okay, so I took the sensor off and I've given it a clean up. Um, you can actually take this top plate off and you can pull the magnet section out and clean it all up so I brake cleaned the whole thing took the wiring harness out now this had a bit of damage it was actually it's been hit at some point and it was flared up so that could have broken the wires internally on this it's um, the wires I couldn't visually see that were broken but there's like a better rubber section that goes like this so when this bent up it possibly could have tore those wires because they'd be quite 
tied inside that rubber. They're all sealed. So, um, <clears throat> what we'll do now is just check it. So, I've got 12 volts hooked up off a battery. Bit of a jerry rig setup, but anyway, got positive and negative going in. And got the wires mashed in there. And if we put it on the sensor wire, which is this pin here, we can see we have 12.2 volts, so we have battery voltage there. Oh, this battery's quite dead. So we've got 12.7 on the supply, 12.2 on the signal. However, it's going to be hard to do when I'm on film, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. But when I rotate the uh, shaft there, I don't get a four pulse signal. I just get a constant 12 volt. So this um, <coughs> this sensor is a uh, is stuffed basically because it's just um, either, either the like I said the wires inside the um, the sensor are broken and they're touching. So the positive and the signal wire are touching, um, which makes sense because they're next to each other, or the actual magnet portion of the sensor is just um, short circuiting, but I'm just getting constant 12 volt on the signal, so this sensor is no good unfortunately. So, getting a new sensor, and fingers crossed that fixes it.